then Satan may just leave you alone. He's lost you. He's lost your soul if you're giving your life to Jesus Christ. And as long as you don't try to take anybody else with you, he don't have a problem with that. So if we, if we be quiet, keep our mouth shut, then oftentimes Satan won't bother us so much. But let's look at, first of all, the problem that Jehoshaphat was experiencing in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. <coughs> After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Minyanites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazon Hamar. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray today as we encounter problems within our lives, things that come into us that rock the boat, that upset us, Father, that that causes problems within our, in our world, within our families, within ourselves as individuals. Father, today as we see how Jehoshaphat handled it, Father, I think there's some great lessons that we can learn to apply to our own lives. And Father, I pray now that I may decrease, that you may increase. We see that war is getting ready to happen in the life of Jehoshaphat. And there is a problem, that is the problem that something is beginning to invade into his life that is going to cause problems, circumstances, stress, other factors in his life. So we know the problem. War is getting ready to begin. We don't, one thing about our lives, sometimes we don't see those things coming on in our lives. They catch us off guard. But if today you're dealing with issues, with concerns, there's great lessons here. If you're not, then praise God. But in our lives, we know that they come from time to time. So the problem, something has interrupted his life, the plans. And we're referring to it as an enemy. For him, it is a battle of war. Second of all, we see the established of purpose. Now, let's look at verse three, uh, 3 and 4. Let's study it a little bit closer. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord... And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek him from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. When problems come into our lives, sometimes we have a tendency to do this. We will do everything we can to handle that problem. We'll exhaust all avenues to try to take care of problems, try to take care of concerns, and sometimes we'll get to the point, get stressed out even as believers and say, I don't know what else to do. I'm lost. And then sometimes we get to that point point, we say, God, I need you. I I've exhausted all avenues that I have. I, I need you to move in my life in a special way. Folks, Jehoshaphat teaches right here, when a problem, a concern comes into your life, the first thing you do is you take it to God. Number one, take that concern to God. Again, sometimes we have a tendency to say, we've tried everything, we can't figure it out, now let's try God. So when concerns come into our life, first thing we ought to do is establish the purpose. The purpose is going to God right away. So here we see that Jehoshaphat turned to God before he had exhausted all his other uh, opportunities that he may have. So the problem is the battle. The purpose is to, and his design was to go to God right off the bat. Now, I don't want to keep saying that, but I, I've just seen a number of people's lives and people that I deal with at work and believers and things like that, that oftentimes this is just not the case. And, and I know that I can understand from God's perspective of wondering why his people that are hurting won't come to him. So I just want to encourage you. Once again, I know I'm reiterating that. The Holy Spirit is laying on my heart. Go to God. I tell you what, it happened to me this week, and I won't go into what's happening uh, uh, in my life and in my world at this moment, but something came on, and uh, praise be unto God that I have finally reached a point, finally, uh, 
I have reached a point in my life that when concerns come in, I go to the Lord first. I think what I used to, I used to have a, a hard time because I tried to fix everything. Are you a fixer? <laughs> Sometimes people can be fixers for their own life, but also fixers for everybody else's life. So all they do is fix. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. People that come in and try to help one another. But, but let me tell you, a fixer sometimes will try to fix before they'll go to God. And you need to go to God. Okay, I think I've said enough about that. Uh, number three, examine the past. Now, Liz and I, because of what is happening with our parents as they grow older and changes in their lives, We've begun more, I believe, and also we've been cleaning up some of the house, going through pictures and looking at things and, and just admiring what a cute baby I was. And I, I'll show you the picture later on. That's sort of different. <laughs> but as we go through, we talked about our childhood and a friend of ours. They were, we noticed they had an attack sale at their home in Salem, and we grew up with these people. and Just things like that. It, sort of history's been on our mind. The past has been on our, mind, on our minds especially with our moms and, and talking to them. But we also talked about her and I when we first got married. We didn't, I tell you what, I didn't have a clue. We were 20 years old. And now when I look at that, so like a kid comes to me and wants to get married at 20 years old, I'm going, are you crazy? But anyway, we did it. I couldn't fix a thing in a house, not a clue how to fix anything. If the toilet didn't flush, I didn't know what to do. I was just really bad. I, we'd, have, we'd have things at the house that break down, they just stay broke down. Every once in a while, her dad may come over, my stepfather, or, or a lot of times Liz had to fix them. Um, I know when our kids and toys broke, you know, so we'll take it to daddy, and I, they would take it to me and give it to me for about 20 seconds, and I'd have the, and they care, mom will fix it. So they would take it to her. So I was horrible at that. Now let me tell you, I gotta tell one of Liz, you know I've never seldom ever seen that. She well let me let me start it with this. She has become a great cook. Ta-da! Exhibit number one. But it was not always like that. When we first got married, I Ed, it was horrible. In fact, I tell you how bad it was. The flies got together and fixed the screen, the hole in the screen. That's how bad it was. <laughs> but again, it's improved greatly. <laughs> if you look at this, Jehoshaphat examined the past. And folks, one of the things that listen to us, we look back and examine the past, we saw times in our lives where God has moved in a supernatural, a miraculous way. We recall the times when, when uh, Nathan became, well, at that point sort of crippled and, and Liz pulled him around in a little red wagon and we were at seminary and they told him that he had juvenile arthritis and, and man, we just, we sort of lost him. You know how it is as parents. But God moved and if he had it, he took it away. I don't know if they diagnosed it right to begin with, but I know one thing. My child could walk again. That was great. Well, listen now to what Jehoshaphat says here in these verses 5 through 7. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O oh Lord God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? I'm sorry. Let me reread verse 7. O oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it forever to the descendants of of Abraham, your friend. He calls them all together and says, listen, the God we serve, is he still not the God that's in heaven? Is he still not in control of all things? 
Folks, one of the greatest blessings, now listen now, one of the things that happens to us, and I think it happens to many believers, and we, it ought not to be, we talk about in church or in a place when I say uh, words of uh, prayer requests, prayer concerns, or words of praise, what is God doing in your life? Folks, that really ought to be a time that we really share what God is doing in our life. One of the great blessings is knowing that God is working in our lives and around our lives, and God is moving in a supernatural way. Listen, there are many folks in here, and I know many of the stories that I guarantee you some of you know them as well, will bless your heart as you hear what God in the past has done and has moved in a supernatural way, an awesome and a powerful way. And, and here, uh, Jehoshaphat is saying, listen, it's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The God that moved in Abraham's life, the God that is the God that was in heaven, is still in heaven, and he is still under control. I want to encourage you to share, I think the, the church word is testimony. But I want to encourage you to just share what Jesus has done for you. Some of the battles I think sometimes Satan wins is when we go, man, I don't, I just didn't see it. That's one of those things that is good. I just keep it quiet. But I may not see it. I may not say it the right way. Oh, listen, folks, just allow God to use and move that. Here Jehoshaphat is saying, listen, there is a battle before me. Right before me, I can see it. And maybe in your life right now, there's a battle in front of you. I don't know. But somewhere down the road, a battle will come. Because it's in the world. But Jehoshaphat is saying, a battle is there. Let me remember what he's done in my past. And that same God, that same God that saw Abraham through, saw all the blessings before, will see me through. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> a problem, a purpose to turn to God, to examine the past. Fourthly, to embrace a promise. Verses 8 and 9. They have lived in and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword, the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. There is a promise from God. I believe it's Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6 that that close with saying that he will never leave you or forsake you. you know, I know you hear me, guys, you've heard that said many, many times. The battle is before. And I know that God will see me through. And he's saying here, even if, if the sword of judgment, plague, famine will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, you will hear us and save us. You will hear us. I know that we go to prayer that God hears us because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for you and I. So we have the problem. We have Jehoshaphat turning immediately to God <coughs> to be an encouragement for the storm that's coming up is to, is to go back in the past and recall what Jesus has done for you. I encourage you sometimes if with your spouse or alone or a friend or something. Have you ever gone in? I, I haven't done this in a long, long time, but written down just some of the blessings that God has bestowed upon you. And the times that God has moved in a special way. Boy, I tell you what, it'll make you look to the future with a sense of promise and great hope because of what he's done. Now in this also in verse 12. It pointed to his weakness. All our God, will you not judge them? Now watch this. For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And this is a profound verse. 
For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. Now, yes, there was a vast army, but have you ever had a battle come up and you say, God, I just do not have the power and strength? Have you tried to deal with the issue so much that you're just plainly exhausted about it? Here, it was pointed to the weakness that Jehoshaphat and his group had, but we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. And listen to this, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. One thing I want to point out here, I think it is a great blessing to realize, to come to an understanding that we, in and of ourselves, we don't have the power and strength to overcome uh, our adversary. And this is really all coming from Satan himself. And when battles come into your life, quite often they come because Satan has, has put them out there. God may have allowed them to come in. But to come to the point where to say, I cannot do it alone. And hopefully that's something that we do right at the beginning and not at the end. Not when we've exhausted all opportunities. But we right at the beginning we say, God, I don't have the power. I don't have the strength. In essence, I am nothing. Now, folks, when you say that, in the world they're saying, the world will say to you, what are you talking about? Of course you're going to be defeated. You don't have power, you don't have strength, you're nothing, you're powerless. What is this? But you know, in the Bible, it, it talks that when we are weak, He is strong. And that's one reason I, I pray, Lord, I pray that I may grieve, decrease, that you may increase. Because I know God is powerful and strong. But listen, I want you to understand this. I believe that God... I don't know if these are the right words. I'm sure it upsets God. Upsets the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. When we give ourselves too hard time. And I think for some of you today, here today, that maybe you need to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying, leave yourself alone. Quit beating yourself up. There is not a single one of us that are perfect in here. We know that. To say, um, I can't make it, I can't do it, I'm always doing wrong, no matter what I try to do, I can't do this. Yes, it's all right to understand that we're weak and we need the power of the Lord. But you shouldn't be beaten up on yourself. And if you're a parent, you know you hate to see your children beaten up on themselves. Understand that you're a child of the living God. And then he died on the cross for you. Not only did it point to the weakness, but also point to the power of God. Verse 15, he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. <coughs> Do not be afraid or discouraged of the vast army. Now watch this. If you don't hear anything else today, I hope you get this. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Oh, man. When I think of this, I just see a relief stress just sort of coming off of me. Because when we look at the battles that may be in your life right now, maybe battles that may come, we look at it and we say we just can't handle it. There's no way we can get control of it. And folks, as a general rule, as human beings, we don't like to feel like we're out of control. Isn't that right? There's nothing more frightening to a human being than to feel like I don't have control of this situation. And that can happen in all different areas. If, if at work, if, uh, if jobs are going to be depleted or done away with, I don't have any control of it. I can't do it. And we feel better when we have control. Here, it is saying that no matter what battle you're going into, 
the battle is not yours, it's God. Oh, folks, that's, that's something that you might just want to write down somewhere. The battle's not yours. Prayer. And say, God, I know the battle is before us. But I understand from your word that it's not my battle, it's yours. And I'm just going to trust you. You know what you get ready to do? You get ready to set up another memory <laughs> that you're going to be able to crawl later on. Because the battle you're getting ready to have, have victory in is going to be a battle that you will recall in history of what God has done for you. What God has done for you. The battle is not yours. It is God's. Now this is something that's pretty awesome here. The praise that comes about, verses 18 through 21. Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kehatites, and the Kehatites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning they left for the desert of uh, Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah, people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men, listen now, to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness, as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Sing that song, don't you? His love endures forever. Sing praise. I like that. I think we already sang that, didn't we? Oh, what a memory. <laughs> oh, well. That's the reason I, I remember quite well. But here it is, folks. It's not in praise that God, if you give me victory, I will praise your holy name. No, we will, amen? I mean, it gives victory. But this is not the praise that we're talking about here. It's not saying, God, if you give me victory. And let me put in a little asterisk here. Have you ever tried to cut a deal with God? That don't work too well, does it? Because we're not going to hold up to our end of it. I don't care what it is. I don't care how faithful you think you are when you say it. We're human beings. We're sinners. We're not going to hold up to our side. I think we've all probably been there trying to cut a deal with God. But here this praise is not praise that's saying, God, you give me victory on this, and man, you got me 100%. I'm on your side. I'm going to be here. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do everything I can in church. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to give money. Lord, if you get me through this victory, it'll all change. That's not what this praise is about. Because victory wasn't there yet. <coughs> It's God because of your promises. And I'll tell you what, I just, when I'm thinking about this, I, I think of those times in our past. And uh, we mentioned of, there's been a number of people or family members that have had breast cancer and their fourth sister just found out that. Uh, but when Liz found that out, you know, we, one of the greatest times that we have when we were in church praising God. And if you've ever been there and gone through something like that, there was a sense of not wanting to leave that. Have you ever been in worship service and in church and you feel like, I don't want to go back out to the world. I just want to stay here and worship. Stay here and praise. And Lord, I just want to call all your promises and all that you've done and, and how you've helped my sister and my brother and I've seen what you've done in their lives. And I just want to stay here. And I just want to fall into your arms. The praise that is being sang here is a praise before the battle has even begun. Before the victory has been assured or has been known. The victory has not yet taken place. And they are praising before the battle. And that makes a big difference. God, listen, you move. I'm going to praise. I'm going to dance. I'll jump these pews. I'll do whatever I need to. And I'm going to praise your holy name. No, it's God no matter what. 
as long as I have another breath in me, I will praise your holy name, even for the battle lane. Oh, folks, I hope that's where you're at. I hope the praising of God is for those things in the past. But it's also saying, God, I'm walking with you. Before the battle gets here, even if I'm in the battle, I'm praising you right now. Because I know the battle is yours. Heavenly Father, there was a battle that lay before Jehoshaphat. Father, at times in our lives, there are battles that come up. Sometimes we can see them on the forefront. Sometimes they hit us like a tidal wave, and we're not expecting them. Father, Jehoshaphat went immediately to you and encouraged his people to seek you. Father God, in doing that, he recalled for his people as we need to recall for ourselves today the faithfulness of you in the past. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father God, you gave him promises Jehoshaphat and his people, and you have promises in your word today. And Father, we could open up your word and we could just see so many promises. Father, we just hold to those promises, even in the midst of a battle. Father, Jehoshaphat was, was able to see his weaknesses. Father, we stand before you today and we. Father, we know we can be strong in your power. But Father, today, for two or three, whoever here needs to hear, you say to them, quit beating up yourself. You're my child. I love you. Follow me. Father, we, have, we are powered by God. And Lord, today, this day, this hour, even if the battle is in the forefront of us, even if we're in the midst of the battle, Father, we're going to praise you. Lord, I'll be standing at the front for any decisions that anyone needs to be made. Maybe someone will talk with you just during the music. But Father, we have chosen this day to praise your holy name. And isn't that name we do pray? Amen. Stand to you.